We welcome you to Syracuse and the East Regional Semifinal. The opening tip controlled by Seton Hall. And a missed shot from the outside by Darius Lane. Caucanus followed up, was fouled, and he'll shoot two. We already had the number one seed in the East, upset here tonight by the Florida Gators. And Florida will take on the winner of this game on Sunday. Florida over Duke, Oklahoma State, and Seton Hall just getting started here before 30,000 plus at the Carrier Dome. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Volcanus hits two, and the Seton Hall Pirates, the tenth seed in the East, winners of two games by a total of three points, both in overtime, operating tonight without Shaheen Holloway. He is not even dressed for this game because of an ankle sprain suffered in the win last week. So Ty Shine takes over at the point for Seton Hall. This is Oklahoma State's first possession, and Mason hits the three from the outside. And there he is, Shaheen Holloway. Billy, he was trying everything he could all week to be able to dress and play a few minutes tonight, but he's not going to go. 20 hours with the rehabilitation per day, but just couldn't pull it off. Such an extensive ankle injury as high, one of those high springs that sometimes can take longer than a break to heal. High shine, number zero, takes over. He was the hero in the win over Temple last week when he filled in with 26 points, seven threes, including the game winner in overtime. Inside, in and out for Montanati. Good no foul that time by Dallenberg. Lane from outside with a three. Well, he missed two from way beyond the three-point line, but continues to shoot. One of the best pure shooters in the Big East. Great range, great strength. The leading scorer in this ball club. With Miami's elimination in Austin tonight, Seton Hall, the last team standing from the Big East. Outside, that shot unable to go for Atkins. So far, both teams being relatively easy to guard since they're taking such tough shots. Dallenbert lays it in. Calcanus with the assist. Jim, I think Eddie Sutton is shocked, and he's going to call a quick timeout because this Seton Hall team is not here to throw in the towel. Seton Hall with a hot start by four. Just getting started here with Seton Hall, an early lead over Oklahoma State. Jim and Billy told you Seton Hall is without the services of star point guard Shaheen Holloway. Sprained ankle, he's been doing round-the-clock treatment, skip breakfast, spring shoot, skip shoot around today. Even went so far as to put on an air cast and try to put a shoe on over it, but the pain was still shooting up his leg. He may play Sunday, and Remus Paul Kana said, we want this team to win it to buy Shaheen more time, Jim. Yeah, you wonder, Billy, could he play? If they won tonight, could he be there for the regional final Sunday? Well, I'm not a doctor, but in watching him just trying to maneuver a little bit, second great shot by Mason. Both of these teams aggressively looking for the jump shot, but Jim, in regard, I, I don't know. You know, watching him try to maneuver around, it would seem very doubtful. Lane, that one dipped down and spun out. And Seton Hall ball. Allenbear trying to go ahead and get that rebound on the inside. Rangy, outstanding freshman player for Seton Hall. Tremendous shot blocker, but so far we've seen nothing but a perimeter game, so the ball hasn't gone inside much. Already tonight, Tulsa and Florida, both winners by nine to advance to the Elite Eight. Six have qualified for the Elite Eight. Two spots remain open. Seton Hall battling Oklahoma State here. Shortly, Tennessee and North Carolina will be meeting in Austin. Shine, open three. And remember, this is a Seton Hall team that has come in and played very difficult Syracuse teams and have won three in a row on this floor against Syracuse, so they have had great success Jan on this court. Yep, Yancean missed the short one. That was some upset over Syracuse this year when the Orangemen were ranked fourth. 19-0 on the season to beat him, as you said, Billy, for the third straight year. Tommy Amaker's never lost on this floor as a coach. Well, and that's really something for Seton Hall because they went 16 straight games losing to Syracuse up here in Syracuse as the Big East got started. Down to eight seconds. Lane wraps Beauty. it inside. Cocanus followed up by Dallenbear. Great move by Lane. I 
thought he'd go and take the jump shot there and draw the foul, but a tremendous wraparound pass. John Cian this time on the inside, right over Dalamere. Dalamere lost sight of his man. We saw that time and again to Duke with those backdoor cuts in the first game by Florida. In the shine, Jan Cian stole it. Excellent job by Jan Cian to anticipate the cut. Gottlieb whips it over, three-point shot. Doesn't go for Atkins. Shine takes the long rebound. He'll challenge Gottlieb. And a block on Gottlieb. Nice job by Shine, because Gottlieb had position. Shine was able to use his body to go ahead and make the play. Now, the difference, Jim, in regard to Shine having to start in this game with Holloway out is the fact that Tommy Amaker's bench, much like his predecessor, Mike Krzyzewski, he has a very short bench. Shine would be coming in normally to give them a lift. Now he's going to have to go the whole game as their leader. Again, a career high, 26 in the win over Temple. Young man out of Augusta, Georgia. It's becoming quite the place for developing college star point guards, Augusta, and that's where Tommy Amaker found them. He was down in Augusta recruiting William Avery, who went on to Duke, where Amaker used to be in the Was there a guy from Connecticut that in the Final Four last exactly year was my point. <laughs> And Ricky Moore. Ricky Moore, the sensational performance to put Duke on their heels last year in the Final Four. Really start for Connecticut in the championship game. And now Ty Shine takes the stage in the NCAA tournament out of Augusta. Basketball Championship is sponsored by Volvo. Fidelity Investments, Microsoft, and by United Airlines. Back at the Carrier Dome. Mom, Dad, thanks for paying my tuition to Seton Hall. A little message sent back home, enjoying the college experience. Gottlieb shine. Gottlieb has yet to penetrate. Number two assist man in the country this year. Let's see if he can get something going. Good pass inside. Oh, up. Dallenbear comes from too far over. Gets it on the way down. Montanati gets credit for the basket. Carolina and Tennessee coming up shortly. Many of you will be getting there for the start of that game in Austin. With steady updates of this scene in Syracuse. Good drive. Shine with a three. It's 0 for 2 now after hitting 7 from behind the arc against Temple ahead to Janzian, who takes it out of bounds. That, no ball. that was a good defensive play by Janzian on the other end, though, Jim. Dallenbear had his opportunity for a putback. Seton Hall really attacking things here against Eddie Sutton's club. You pointed out he's taken four different teams to the NCAA tournament, two different clubs, Oklahoma State and Arkansas, to the Final Four. Kevin Wilkins in for the first time. Here he is. Got it. And almost. He'll shoot a pair for the fastest coverage online and a complete look at the starting lineups of the remaining tournament teams. Click on March Mayhem at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword CBS Sportsline. Remaining teams, there are only 10 teams still alive in the chase for the 2000 championship. That was called a Montanati, his first. Wilkins, not a good shooter, so not a guy that you want to go ahead and commit that kind of a foul. Big game this year, 13 against Florida State. Very poor free throw shooter, 37% on the year. Comes from a family, though, that knows a little thing about basketball. Absolutely. Cousins, Dominique, and Gerald Wilkins. And what would be, I guess, uh, he's got a cousin, or what would he have at North Carolina State? That's uh, that's Gerald Wilkins' son, so I wonder what that would be to him. Would that be a, was he a cousin? What is he? That would was he, he an uncle? He would be an uncle. Yeah. Mason is fouled in the lane. So far, this game really hasn't taken on a flavor. I think that uh, we're going to have to see somebody start getting to an offense. Teams are rapidly coming down, taking quick shots. Not the continuity we saw in the first game. A game plan that's uh, being carried out by either team. Mason, first team, all Big 12. 
For an Oklahoma State team that in the Big 12 finished behind only Iowa State and Texas in the regular season. Lost twice to the Cyclones who are already in the Elite Eight by 11 and by four. 26 and six though, assured of having the best record, season record at Oklahoma State in some 50 years. Well, a school steeped in tradition under Coach Iva. A man that uh, took multiple teams and won two. The first guy ever to win back-to-back -back championships in the NCAA tournament. In 1945 and 46, here we're talking about Duke, the uh, only back-to-back -back champions in the last quarter century. Oklahoma A&M, as it was known back in the 40s, the first to ever do that, successfully defend the crown. Of course, uh, Coach Iva, a Hall of Famer, and the man that he had in the middle, Bob Curlin, one of the real gentlemen I've ever met in my life, was the really the first of the prototype centers that led that team to two championships. Most outstanding player two straight years. Right, first man to do that. Never went into professional basketball, but certainly one of the great players in the history of the sport. Caucasus, front of the rim on a three. Alan Bear with another rebound. Very active inside, isn't yeah, he? He's got great hands. He's going to be an outstanding player. Already with five rebounds in the game's first six minutes. Solid screen, but Morton knocks Mason to the floor. His first. Talking about that 46 title game the, where they successfully, the Cowboys successfully defended their title. It was the first championship game ever televised. It was broadcast on WCBS in New York. An estimated audience of a half million watched that one. The game was played, in fact, in New York City, and they televised it there. Young Zian. Excellent play. That man is coming out very strong here in this NCAA tournament and in postseason play in general. Big 12 tournament as well. 15 and 13 against Kansas. Eight with 17 re rebounds, a new record against Iowa State. And had his career high against Pepperdine. There he is again. He's down for a moment. And came out. Carolina and Tennessee coming up shortly for many of you. And a traveling call on the Pirates. Shine wanted to push on Gottlieb, didn't get it. Shine not able to get started, Jim. And isn't it amazing that sometimes when a guy comes off the bench and gives the, the incredible performance that he did to bring this team to the point where they upset Temple, has not been able to get started here at all as a starter in this game. Weber comes in for Oklahoma State, number 45, and you're looking at Charles Menga for Seton Hall. Seeing his first action. What do you look for here, Billy, as far as tempo tonight? Well, I really, as I said, this game really hasn't created a personality yet. Lyndon Alexander's first action, number four. He's a sharpshooter from the outside. Wow, there is Kalkinas putting Weber on the floor. Weber hurt his wrist on the play. Which was already ailing with a bump bump. And here he is, seven on the shot clock. Gottlieb in the lane. Uh, didn't even hit rim. I like what Seton Hall's doing on Gottlieb, though. They're letting him take any shot that he wants. Lane for the lead back. Six times Lane. Greg Gumbel in New York, Oklahoma State with a two-point lead on Seton Hall in Syracuse. We'll keep an eye on that game, but those of you expecting action out of the South from Austin, Texas, North Carolina, and Tennessee, tip time is on its way. We'll send you to Dick Enberg and James Worthy right after this. Freeman to get everybody in the huddle to explain what defense they're going to get into after this free throw. No, they, they don't go to the line, so they want to get in their offense. Got leave out. Atkins will move over to be the primary ball handler now. Alexander, we said he loves the three, and he hits his first shot of the night. And points to the crowd in his customary fashion. Young man transferred from Arkansas. He was playing for Nolan Richardson. Seton Hall's missed its last five shots. Manga, he hits that streak. You love to see a guy come off the bench, give you not only minutes, but some points you don't expect for Tommy Amaker. Sophomore from Cameroon. Oklahoma 
state section holds up a card with three on it. Got Lane on him right now. Mason with Caucanus. Nice job by Lane. Cowboys get it back. Alexander two this time. Followed up by Williams. Williams. Lane so aggressive offensively. in Austin, Texas at the Irwin Center for the second game of the South Regional. Featuring traditional power, North Carolina, a record 26th consecutive NCAA tournament against the winningest team ever at the University of Tennessee. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane, an impressive win over the University of Miami, advancing to the Elite Eight to meet either Carolina or Tennessee as we welcome you back to Kenberg with James Worthy. Ed Cota, the senior playmaking guard for North Carolina, over a thousand assists in his career, third all-time in college basketball history. He is key to Carolina's success tonight. No question, his senior year, he's facing to possibly be in his last game. He's a great distributor of the basketball, but I do believe if North Carolina must be effective, he must look to score. He does a good job of getting inside. He's got to take advantage of the shot. He's the 40-minute man, played 40 minutes against Missouri and 40 in the win against Stanford. Now, for Tennessee, Tony Harris is their leading scorer, but John Higgins is the man who has to protect the agate. No question. He's a guy that's a better distributor for Tennessee when you have Tony Harris at the two spot. They combine to play the point guard to do it very well. Tony Harris has to be hot for Tennessee to be successful. Harris is like uh, the shower in the hotel. He's hot and it feels good, but boy, it can turn cold on you suddenly. <laughs> Here are the starting Don't lineups. <laughs> Capel, Lang, the seven-footer, Haywood in the middle of the North Carolina offense. Ed Cota, he's key outside, and Joseph Forte, the ACC Freshman of the Year. For Tennessee, Yarbrough, a terrific sophomore at 6'7". Isaiah Victor, he's not played well in the last couple of weeks. C.J. Black in the middle, Tony Harris, the shooting guard, John Higgins, is the playmaker. And here are the coaches, Jerry Green. He's led the Tennessee volunteers to 26 wins by far the most ever in school history and trying to get to the first uh, elite eight against a veteran Bill Guthridge Guthridge much maligned during the course of a disappointing season but his team has stayed together played very well they're peaking at the right time and many say there's no reason why North Carolina can't make it to the final four ready to go in Longhorn land at the University of Texas's uh, Irwin Center North Carolina has been pounding the basketball inside and they must do that against Tennessee. However, Tennessee has a, a few tricks up their sleeve as well. C.J. Black, a good post up player with post blocking abilities and also Victor has leaping ability. So even though they're not as strong, they're very athletic when it comes to blocking shots. Hathaway, the seven footer from Greensboro to jump it for North Carolina against Isaiah Victor. Forte back to Coda. Dota had 10 assists in each of the two wins in Birmingham. Veteran from Brooklyn, New York. Lang to Forte. Cota inside to Haywood. So they're able to get it inside of the big man who makes an early statement. Did it against Stanford against the Giants. College twins and Matson, and he should have a very easy time against Tennessee, who has nobody that can match up with them one on one. And the turnover, Tony Harris's pass off the hands of Victor. And we're going to see this all night. Watch the seal and the pass over the top. Yarbrough, even though he gets there, not effective against Haywood, who's leading the nation in field goal percentage at about 72%. Full court press used by Tennessee, but. Jason Capel able to bring it in rather handily. Hawked by Victor defensively, lying outside. Forte with Higgins. Capel and Victor, and back into Haywood for another easy two. And Carolina getting two very easy goals from their seven foot center. And if I'm Jerry Green, I'm thinking zone right now because if they're going to depend on a one on one, they're not going to be able to stop Brendan Haywood. They're going to have to go to a zone or a matchup zone as Higgins knocks it down from outside. Well, he hasn't made a lot of points, but he's made some critical threes in the tournament. It's four to three as Tennessee on the board on Higgins' tray. The Forte is going to have to make Higgins respond on the defense and fatigue him a little bit. There's Haywood over the top. 
Lang gets the garbage, and Chris Lang at 6'10 hammers it down. 6'3 Carolina. Chris Lang, another key factor for Carolina. Really, he had, he had a pretty good, consistent season since his freshman year. He's got to go in and help out on the inside. Coda on Higgins, and Coda comes up with a steal. Usually brings it in deliberately. There was no advantage. Haywood outside, and then they'll move him underneath. Swinging around and trying to find Haywood again inside. It always comes back to the strong side. There he is. CJ Black giving away about five inches against Haywood. Forte with a screen from Haywood, and the freshman Forte makes it 8 3 Carolina. Well, they make Tony Harris a liability on defense because if he can utilize his quickness on the perimeter, they are taking him down inside. Forte can definitely shoot over both guards for Tennessee. Yarbrough well off the mark with his three point attempt. Coda with a rebound. Coda with 4.3 rebounds a game at guard. And Yarbrough for Tennessee, the most versatile player. I don't really think gets enough look at the basket as Cable misses. And Higgins the other way to Harris. Forte on Harris. A hanger. Not there, and Haywood with a rebound. The clear to Coda. Well, both, Numbers not there. Both Coda and Forte put the size on Harris and make it tough for him to shoot over the top. Haywood into the lane. No foul. Victor gets the ball for Tennessee. Well, if you can force Brendan Haywood to put the ball on the floor, you've done a great job. He doesn't handle it well when he has to put it on the basketball floor. And Isaiah Victor from outside with a three. So Victor, who has been quiet for the balls, a 6'9 junior from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, makes it 8'6. A little disappointing for Jerry Green over the regular season. Not as effective as he's liked him to be. Doesn't play as physical as he needs to. A great time to redeem himself. Into Lang, and Lang blocked by Victor. Here comes Harris. Sets up for the three. And the rebound, Forte. He'll fire from three-point range and connect. It's 11 to six. Carolina, five for Forte. Under control. I've never seen a, a freshman as poised and patient. Even, even Michael Jordan as a freshman wasn't as poised and patient. It wasn't as, as natural as Forte. Seems like he's been around for a while already. 11 to six, North Carolina leading Tennessee early. Four minutes and change have been played into C.J. Black trying to get around Haywood. He can't block by Haywood, not a bounds to Tennessee. And with it, a timeout. Four and a half minutes played here at the University of Texas. Carolina leads Tennessee by five. Humble Clark Kellogg in our studios in New York. Seton Hall and Oklahoma State tied at 20. We'll keep tabs on that game for you and bring you right back after we check in. They're in a timeout in Austin and North Carolina with an 11-6 lead on the ball. The strength of North Carolina teams is point guard Ed Coda's ability to run the show and their size up front. A more animated and aggressive Brendan Haywood has been outstanding in the tournament, and he's got a partner in crime down there in Chris Lang. That'll be the matchup to keep an eye on. All right, Clark, let's get you back to Syracuse, Seton Hall, and Oklahoma State. Jim Nansen, Billy Packer. Come right out of the break at Seton Hall has called a timeout. 2020 here at Syracuse. Winner plays Tulsa in the regional final on Sunday. North Carolina by five. Spencer Tillman, what do you have for us? Well, Dick, both coaches in a jovial mood. I spoke with both Jerry Green and Bill Guthers before the game. Jerry Green said when asked what the key to the game for him was, he said, look, I like the fact that the seats are orange. It kind of gives us the home court advantage. He went on to say he's got to control this team's diversity, both inside and out. Bill Guthridge, on the other hand, said that he's concerned about their athleticism. We'll see how it plays out. Well, and Guthridge has the advantage of size inside as a is put in play 11 6 Carolina. Two coaches that know each other very well when Jerry Green was a coach at UNC Asheville spent a lot of time at Carolina basketball school where all the coaches got together. Well so that's a nice move by Higgins behind the screen to pick off his second tray and pull Tennessee within two. So 
John Higgins has his average already six points. Forte from 15 down the bottom of the well for the rookie. He has seven. Hey, well, he is a smooth, quiet freshman that plays like a senior. Look at this. Ron Slay just into the game. The freshman for University of Tennessee. He's not afraid to shoot it. He'll bring energy to the volunteer game. Forte again. Three in a row for Joseph Forte. The freshman from Greenbelt, Maryland, went to DeMantha High School, played for the legendary Morgan Wooten. Average 16 on the season to lead Carolina, the first freshman ever in North Carolina history to lead the team in scoring. It reminds me of Michael Jordan a little bit. Michael, you know, Michael talked a little bit more. He was a little bit more verbal, but not on the floor. Very focused, very sure. I think Forte is a step ahead of Jordan, though, as far as the development stage is concerned as a freshman. Yarbrough rejected. Harris reclaims. Yarbrough inside the line. Haywood bats it over to Coda. Carolina by six. Nearly six minutes have been played. Well, they're going inside to Peppers, who's also a pretty consistent inside player. Carolina will beat the ball inside until you counter that. Right now they're trying to do it with Haywood and Peppers. Coda penetrating and picks up the first foul of the game. And it goes against Tony Harris. His First, obviously, as Julius Peppers has replaced Chris Lang, Lang back at the scorer's table. Uh, Bill Guthridge used only seven players total in the two games in Birmingham, and Peppers gave him some big time minutes. The uh, defensive end, freshman football star for the North Carolina team. Coda has his first point. Lang returns, and it'll be Brendan Haywood that gets a breather. Two football players. On that Carolina roster, one has been hurt since October. That's Ronald Curry, who's quarterback. Carolina, a guard that Coach Guthrie really misses as far as the quickness is concerned at the perimeter. 16 to 9. Higgins, he's feeling it. Eight points for John Higgins. Terrific start for the man from Shaker Heights, Ohio. Well, you have to switch on Higgins because he's so good at coming off of picks, down screens, and, and back picks. There's Forte, and he's on fire. He's hit four in a row. 11 points for Joseph Forte, the 6'4 freshman. Five for six shooting. Lang with a block at the other end. Forte coming up big again for North Carolina. He and Lang. The stoppers of Harris and Harris a little bit out of control and he can hurt Tennessee when he does not look to pass the basketball. A lot of people think that at the point guard position he looks to shoot the ball a little bit too much. That's why Higgins is such a, a, a good balance with Harris in the ball game. Carolina goes into a zone. Slay. Yarbrough back to Slay. Over line blocked by Peppers. Dr. Peppers. Well, he threw a little salt net room. Forte to the baseline to Lang. And Forte up to grab the rebound away from Yarbrough and another chance for Carolina. Seven minutes have been played. North Carolina by seven. Forte finally misses and the foul on Peppers underneath. First on Julius Peppers. Well, Julius Peppers, a great leaper himself, pouring a little salt in the wound of Ron Slay. Get it out of here. He's been an excellent addition. As a walk on football player for Coach Guthridge. Had six sacks and 50 tackles as an All America freshman player at Carolina in the fall. Didn't start practicing till Thanksgiving after the season was over, and now playing a big role in the tournament bid for this story program. Inside to Slay. He's blocked by Peppers. That's two for him. Back comes Hathaway. Nice tip. Hathaway patiently, and he's blocked again by Peppers, but that will be. His second foul. Well, the defense is tenacious inside for North Carolina. Julius Peppers leading the way, only 6'7, 270, but boy, can he get off the floor for a player his size? They're going to give that last foul to Chris Lang. He and Peppers both hammering at uh, Charles Hathaway, who was recruited by former Tennessee coach Kevin O'Neill, now the head man at Northwestern. Hathaway 6'10 from Nashville. He played football too with that body, you can imagine. <laughs> a punter. <laughs> you look at that size of that, and you say, a punter? It looked like a punter to me. 
looks like a, he looks like an offensive line one one side of it. Terrence Newby number 21 who's seen limited duty in the tournament play in for North Carolina. He replaces uh, Coda and that's the first breather for Ed Coda in the entire tournament. Well, Newby's not a, not a great ball handler. That's why you see Jason Capel handle the basketball well. Newby will turn it over, but we'll give you some offense. Peppers, the left-hander, not there. Harris Walker just in for Tennessee, and he's hardly true to the surname. He's a flyer. Behind the back to Slay as Yarbrough with a little extra sets up his teammate Yarbrough's first points. 18-15, North Carolina's lead. Well, Cut to three. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Jerry Green has Vincent Yarbrough play the point because of his size and the ability to get in and pass in the interior. As you can see over the defense, it's pretty good. Capel into the lane to score his first basket, and it's 20 to 15, North Carolina. Capel's had to play a lot of power for him. Chris Lane went down with injuries, did an excellent job in shutting down Jacobson at Stanford, so he's taken on the name as a defensive stopper for North Carolina. Battle for the rebound, and it's last touched by Charles Hathaway of Tennessee. Here comes Brendan Haywood back in, and C.J. Black will answer for Tennessee. Timeout, North Carolina by five. Lead on the Tennessee Volunteers. And the Carolina Tar Heels looking pretty good, Clark. Playing very aggressively at both ends, doing a nice job inside. They're riding the outstanding play of Joseph Forte, the outstanding freshman. He's got 11 already. Time out there. We'll keep you updated. Let's send you back to Syracuse. Tommy Amaker looking for a bigger lead. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Oklahoma State ball under four minutes to go first half. The Cowboys, the three seed, are down by four to the Seton Hall Pirates. Atkins in the lane, gives it up. And Yanzian will head to the line for a pair. You notice, Jim, every time that there's a timeout, Tommy Amaker comes out and shows something different. He's shown the 1-3-1 one, one zone. That time he showed the full court press. Young man with a terrific mind for the game. Coming up, Pennzoil at the half. Greg and Clark will get you caught up on all the stories of the night, plus another live look in at Tennessee, North Carolina. Coming up at the half. Frederick Jan Zian, a big reason why Oklahoma State advanced to the Swede 16, if you will, with a career high 21 against Pepperdine last Sunday. He was 7 for 13 from the field and 7 for 8 from the foul line. As I said in postseason play, has been truly outstanding for this ball club. 6'10 sophomore from Uppsala Sweep. Just think of that 17 rebounds against Iowa State. Lane three. Nice release. Doesn't quite get it to go. Got lead with excellent hands. Got it over to Montanati for the save. Got lead for start his career at Notre Dame. There's Yonzian. He's a factor for this team. Eight tonight. Ties it at 31. Shine. Yes. First time now with the three. Gottlieb did not anticipate that he was going to shoot that shot. He beat him. Shine breaks the tie and Seton Hall leads 34-31. Some good back screening here now by Oklahoma State. And underneath it's Lane. Harris had a good break. A reach in. Montanani forced it. Shine had nowhere to go on that play, Jim. Even if he got inside, what was he going to do with the ball? Seton Hall could not afford to turn it over. They know that Shine's going to have to be out there for 40 minutes. Nice catch by Mason. And an assist by Gottlieb. Good back screening here by Oklahoma State. Last few times down the floor. He said Seton Hall can't turn it over. Only five turnovers thus far for the Pirates, but just two for Oklahoma State. Lane, tough shot, yes. Second one like that tonight. Three players from Minnesota this year on their respective teams led their teams in scoring in the Big East. Lane with a help. Alexander. Push. Over the back. No. Montanari push. 
Alexander likes that corner spot over there, but he wasn't quite ready to release the shot. Didn't get the same percentage that he would normally have. He'll have to head to the bench for the rest of the half with three. He's a 45% three-point shooter, Jim, and loves to put him up, but uh, he didn't quite have the ball in his hands to get ready for the release. It'll be a one-and-one one at the other end. That was the seventh team foul in Oklahoma State. So, Greg Morton, 6'7 freshman from Bronx, New York. His father was the most valuable player in the 1982 NIT. That was, as Tulsa went on to win the championship. Right, that was Nolan Richardson's club. Father Tulsa. Greg Stewart. Right. Tulsa has had uh, some list of coaches that have gone through there since Nolan put that program on the map. Bill Self, of course, doing a great job now. Bobby Smith, former Tulsa coach. Championship coach of 1998. 1.50 to go in the half. Mason with a good rub up. But here come these back strings. That, no question about it, referee. That's a hold right there. On the, Manga. the back screens are starting to work extremely effective. They've been very effective here the last five or six times down the floor. We'll see the back screen. Now there's a hold. Magnum realized he can't beat him to the spot. Second on Manga. Quick inbounds to Mason. And shine skies for the rebound. You know, we talk about Holloway, and everybody thinks about him as a point guard. He's the number two rebounder on this team, Jim. Yeah. At five foot ten, if you want to stretch it to that. He had 11 rebounds for a season high on this four in the upset of Syracuse. And think about the kind of trees that Syracuse have on the floor. Five rebounds for Shine, though, tonight. So filling the role very uh, nicely. Eight on the shot clock. One ten to go in the half. Got me putting some very good man to man defense on him. Shine tipped up Carcanus. Seton Hall ball. Great hustle by Carcanus. Young man who would like to try out for his Olympic team. Remember when the United States was beaten by Russia in 1988 in the Olympics? There were four players on that starting Russian team from Lithuania. Lane with the fadeaway three, doesn't drop under a minute to play and a half. Gottlieb on the drive, and a clean block by Morton. That, that was not Bellambert on the inside, it was Morton that got that piece. Great job, good timing, the ball not on the way down. With Gottlieb's shooting percentage though, Jim, you almost say, let him take that shot and get ready to rebound. His shooting percentages uh, have always been very low, and free throw line is no exception. Yeah, 40, almost 46% free throw shooter for his career in four years. But he'll throw you an assist. Number 10 all time in the college game, number one last year, number two this season. Seven on the shot clock. John Zian. Oh, he has a great release. Very steady. Seton Hall can take the last shot of the half. With a one-point lead. I think Seton Hall has shocked Oklahoma State to be able to play this well without Holloway, their leader. Lane with eight. Back out. Conkanis. Mason. Still time. I tell you, whoa, whoa, whoa. That horn sounded. Oh, the horn sounded mistake. before there was time. Yes, there's a off the clock. Absolutely. The there, are, there are two seconds now. At the end of the half, the both horse. referees should go look at that. And Gottlieb's pointing. Absolutely. The sounded, and there was over a second to go on the clock. I believe. Well, Gottlieb likes to talk. Well, well, now, that doesn't say it there, but Billy, the clock straight away from us. And, and the, the wires are the, pointing. The one in the end zone, there was a good a good period of time left on that. How do you have conflicting times? I don't know. I, that, were that, they that out of sync? That, that clock that you see right here, the inset clock here is off the back of the board. But the main scoreboard clock here, I'm going to tell you, Billy, you saw it too. Yeah, they had at least a second to go on it. Exactly. They, the, the scoreboard clock 
uh, up on the uh, on the ceilings here were not in sync with the clocks above the basket. And the horn sounded, so that's going to, I'd say that the half is over. The, the half's going to be over, and the officials have, well, there's no doubt about the buzzer sound. You're right. going to hear it, it's going to say to you, hey. Now, that's, that's not the point, though. That is not the point there, folks. You're hearing the buzzer and everything, but we're going to tell you, we saw it here on the main score clock here, not the one that you saw on your inset, which is and, taken off the back of the and, backboard. And, Jim, in fairness to Mason, as he was dribbling up the court, he was looking at the big scoreboard clocks here that showed time remaining. So the buzzer, the light, they all indicate the shot was taken after the fact. But this clock right, right. here. And that's what Mason was looking right at as he was dribbling. It wasn't even close. No. It really wasn't even close. And Eddie Sutton's going to argue, but I don't think he's going to win on this one. And what happened is that the clock on the, on the top of the basket was not the same as the ones at the end of the court. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the half, sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our studios here in New York. Pennzoil at the half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg at halftime. Seton Hall with a one point lead on Oklahoma State. With Shaheen Holloway not playing, can you say enough about Ty Shine? He's been tremendous. He stepped in and got the career high 26 points in their overtime win to advance to this game. And their perimeter is the strength of their team. 25 of the 36 points they've scored on the perimeter. They're going to have to maintain that kind of pace. And I think they're capable, but inside Oklahoma State probably wears them down in the second half. All right, Clark, these teams playing for the right to move on and play Florida on Sunday. Meanwhile, in the South region in Austin, North Carolina, trailing the Tennessee Volunteers 28-23, 6.47 to play in the first half. Let's take you live to Austin. Gets Julius Peppers in the air. Peppers can't collect the rebound. Harris inside to take over, and Owens with a steal, North Carolina. Forte hot earlier, made four in a row. Walker defending him. Owens trying to create and then made the bad pass. Deflected by Black, intercepted by Victor. Harris to Victor. And Coda able to strip it, but a foul on Ed Coda. Well, North Carolina's defense a little stagnant right now. Owens made some great moves, but didn't have anywhere to go with the basketball, resulting in a turnover, and Tennessee is getting out on makes, misses, and turnovers and making something happen in the transition. Isaiah Victor at 6'9", and quick on, quick, averaging just under 10 a game on the season, has five tonight. And Vincent Yarbrough, the sensational Tennessee sophomore from Cleveland, Tennessee, replaces C.J. Black. Isaiah Victor at the line. He's had some big games. He's also had some skids, and he's had too many for Jerry Green, but he's a player that can rise to the occasion and have big games. Forte helping out Cote on the backcourt. And there's the turnover caught in midair, and Victor all the way for Tennessee. Eight points for Isaiah Victor to lead the Vowels, and it's an eight-point advantage for Tennessee. And, and Coda is, is shaken up. There's no one else on the Carolina team that can handle the basketball. So when they take it out of Coda's hands, forces other players to handle the basketball, that the pressure is, is, is intense, and Carolina's turning the ball over. So here's a situation where Forte, he leaves his feet. Now, that's the worst thing you can do is leave your feet with nowhere to pass the ball. Jason Capel comes in for North Carolina, and Tony Harris from behind Coda strips it. And it's Victor the other way, and then Forte with a steal. Off to Coda. Beautiful pass by Forte. Three points for Coda, 33-27, Tennessee's lead. And even though Coda beat the press, the quickness of Tony Harris to retrieve and knock the ball out of his hands. Forte, though, however, quick to the ball and a nice no-look pass to Coda. Tennessee executing well, picking their spots. Yarbrough at one point, C.J. Black. They've even used Hathaway inside. Higgins for another three. It rattles up, and Hathaway with the rebound. It won't go. Lang and Hathaway battle, and it's out of bounds. 
Off Hathaway's knee. Hathaway exerting himself. I haven't seen him play with this much aggressiveness all year long, but realizing this is a or do or die. He's really been active inside, knowing that he has to compete with Lang and Haywood. Here in Austin, Tulsa's already earned the right to play the winner of this one in the Elite Eight on Sunday. Approaching the four minute mark, Coda takes it inside. Good move by the senior Coda. It's 33 29. No quit in North Carolina, 33 29. Just a second over four minutes remaining to be played in the first half. Earlier today in Syracuse, the Florida Gators knocked off top seed Duke in the East, 87 78. Duke's lead increases to five here. Jason Williams with the steal. Watch the nice behind the back pass to Mike Dunleavy for two. But here comes Florida. They're going to tie it up. Watch this miraculous shot by Teddy Dupay. Nice job to get open. Draws the contact from Boozer, gets the shot to fall. Three point play, play, tied it up. Cues for second half action after this. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Well, during the course of the regular season, the Big Ten, a lot of votes for the toughest conference in the country, and they're proving their point here in the tournament as the Merrill Lynch tournament summary shows are 11 and 3. Wisconsin, Purdue will meet in the regional final. Michigan State is through. Florida with a win, and Tulsa winning here, and Iowa State, those who are in the Elite Eight. And North Carolina battling Tennessee for that honor on Sunday to meet the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. And how quick people off the dribble and he can also shoot over Haywood which we've seen already and he can knock the outside shot down a very versatile player for Jerry Green so Julius Peppers with his third foul so he's got a seat next to Bill Guthridge and he's a good free throw shooter as well in fact the best on this Tennessee team just under 79 percent for the season now with nine points and a perfect three for three from the line tonight Played in that tough SEC conference where there were at least six at one point seven teams ranked in the top 25. So Tennessee comes from a lot of tough preparation down in the Southeastern Conference. Higgins in for Harris for Tennessee with 150 left and the Vols now enjoying a eight point lead. And look at the trap. They're forcing it one way or the other putting the size on Coda in Yarbrough taking away the vision. He's Oops. got to look to shoot the basketball. Coda's got to look to shoot. Surprised by the pass in North Carolina. Very fortunate to come up with the ball as Slay touched it last as Forte not looking for the pass from Coda. And Coda, I mean, Tennessee knows that Ed Coda doesn't want to shoot the ball. And even if he's not shooting well, he must take the shots that are available to him because the opportunities are there. Now they set up the out of bounds play, but the official is doing a little. Uh, Mop up work, perspiration on the court. Haywood at the start of the game had those two quick, easy baskets, and he's been shut out since. So Tennessee made a terrific defensive adjustment. Well, they tried to play him straight up. Now, Black does a good job of taking away the position, but it didn't work over the top. Now they're fighting for inbounds position. Black, the defensive player, always gets the, uh, the first choice of where he wants to be. To Haywood. And he misses. See, that's not his shot. They're forcing Haywood into shots he doesn't want to take now. Harris Walker on the fly. Partially deflected by Haywood, but Slay everywhere. Can't hit the short jumper. Walker steals it. Three pointer. And Higgins just missed. Here comes Forte. The number's not there. Capel uh, run into. <laughs> By C.J. Black. That was uh, looked like one of the deep passes uh, in the football field where that defender goes up. Like a, like a football play and then ended up with the chokehold. Second foul on C.J. Black to the line for North Carolina. Jason Capel. And he has been uh, the quiet man. You called him the X factor in Birmingham, and uh, he's almost been the zero factor here, the O factor, two points. Yeah, he hadn't done anything on the offensive end. He did a good job against Stanford defensively, but they need Capel on offense as well. Carolina only one for two from the line, while Tennessee nine for ten. 
Coming up on Penzoil at the half, Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg will update you on that Oklahoma State Seton Hall game, all the tournament news, all coming up on Penzoil at the half. Boy, that Clark Kellogg's good. Every sentence has meat in it. I mean, he, in six, seven words, really says something every time Gumbel calls on him. My idol, Clark Kellogg. I remember they used to throw that pass to him off the backboard in Indiana. He used to wear me out. 107 left in the half. Tennessee by six. Carolina matching up with a little matchup zone. Not really a man to man switching on areas. Now they go to a full man to man and kind of threw Tennessee off. They had to back it out and, and refocus. Nine on the clock into Hathaway. Can't go to over Haywood. And a three second violation. Hathaway a bit uncertain about his move. And so North Carolina with 35.7 seconds, just a less than a second difference between the shot clock and game clock. And Brendan Haywood's not going to go for any pump fake, so there's no use of giving him one. You got to do what Ron Slay did back it down and go right over the top because he's expecting the pump fake. Carolina trying to set up a good final shot here at the end of the first half. Cut into the Tennessee lead. Down to 10. With the denial on Ed Coda. They couldn't get it to him. Forced to take that shot. But big three. Good. Big time three for Capel. And that is the end of the first half. North Carolina and Tennessee. A three point game at the half. Spencer Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBA.